As Nan Gong Yu was affected by the demonic insect, she began to fall. Jin Shin immediately rushed forward, caught her, and asked if she was okay. Panting, Nan Gong Yu placed a hand over her chest and asked Jin Shun not to look at her. Jin Shin closed his eyes and assured her, I won't look at you. He sighed at Nan Gong Yu's situation. According to his memories, the demonic insect was a creature that stimulated human desires, much like an aphrodisiac. Jin Shin wondered if this was Nan Gong Yu's first time being caught in such a sinister trick, leading to her being defenseless and falling for it. Just then, Nan Gong Yu began licking her fingers, her lust taking over. She gazed at Jin Shin with flushed cheeks and called out his name. At that moment, several screens flashed before Jin Shun, notifying him of Nan Gong Yu's favorability increase. It jumped to 52 points, then quickly to 72 points, and finally reached 92 points, representing sworn, everlasting love. Jin Shun, cheeks flushed, knew this favorability increase wasn't real but just the effect of the demonic insect. Still panting, Nan Gong Yu placed her hands over her chest and told Jin Shun, I feel really uncomfortable. Could you please help me? She then raised her trembling body, got close to Jin Shin, and with closed eyes, tried to kiss him. Jin Shin, also taken in by her charm, felt his cheeks flush red. He pondered what would happen if he spent the night with Nan Gong Yu right now. But Jin Shun stopped his thoughts there and immediately pushed Nan Gong Yu back. Panting heavily and holding his knees, Jin Shin realized he had almost been taken in by her charm. He knew that if he spent the night with her, Nan Gong Yu would realize everything once she woke up. Then her favorability would drop to zero, and, at worst, she might turn against him and kill him in a fit of rage. Jin Shin didn't want to ruin his future just for a single night of passion. He turned to look at the ancient well. From his previous life, he remembered there were always special pills inside the well. The problem was that a formation inside the well could only be withstood by someone at the crystallization stage, but Jin Shun was only at the qi refining stage. However, Jin Shun didn't have time to worry about that, so he charged towards the well, telling Nan Gong Yu to hold on for a little while as he went to find the antidote. As Jin Shun approached the well, malevolent energy still lingered, but he didn't hesitate and jumped down. Landing deep within the well, Jin Shun held a torch to light the area. As he looked around, he saw the remains of villagers' bones scattered around, intensifying the yin energy in the well. As he stepped forward, the formation activated, and Jin Shun's HP started dropping drastically. He raised his hand to block the yin energy, knowing he had to hurry and find the pill. If he continued taking damage, he wouldn't be able to hold out much longer. Just then, Jin Shun's gaze landed on something shining in a pile of bones. Upon closer inspection, he noticed a small bottle containing healing pills. His eyes sharpened, and he quickly charged towards the pile of bones. At that moment, Yin Thunder began gathering above him. Jin Shen immediately raised his hand, gesturing with two fingers to summon a spirit shield. Just before the Yin Thunder shot towards him, the shield formed, blocking the attack. However, the Yin Thunder began gathering again. Knowing he had to act fast, Jin Shen grabbed the pill bottle and charged towards the well's opening. But the fully formed Yin Thunder shot out just as Jin Shen reached the opening. Turning to look behind, he knew he couldn't dodge it. The Yin Thunder struck Jin Shen, dealing a critical hit of 4000 HP. After being hit, Jin Shen flew out of the well and collapsed on the ground near Nan Gong Yu. He started writhing in pain from the Yin Thunder entering his body, triggering the unconscious state. In his last moments of consciousness, he caught hold of Nan Gong Yu and fed her the antidote from the bottle he had retrieved from the well. Jin Shen then coughed up a mouthful of blood and collapsed on Nan Gong Yu's chest, his body in a near death state before falling unconscious. Sometime later, Nan Gong Yu woke up. Confused, she tried to get up but felt something heavy pressing down on her. As she regained her senses, she realized Jin Shen was lying on top of her. Tears filled her eyes as she wondered if Jin Shen had taken advantage of her while she was under the influence of the demonic insect. Her face flushed red as she imagined the scene. In anger and frustration, she shouted and slapped Jin Shen away from her. Jin Shen, already on the verge of death, saw his HP drop to a mere speck after the slap. Nan Gong Yu cursed Jin Shen, calling him a beast and a bastard, and exclaimed that she hated him. Jin Shen, completely unconscious, lay flat on the ground, unaware of her accusations. Just then, Nan Gong Yu's gaze landed on the red bottle lying nearby. Sweat trickled down her cheek as she realized it contained a healing item. Recalling how Jin Shen had pushed her away when she tried to cling to him and how he had rushed to the ancient well, risking his life to obtain the antidote, she began to understand the truth. 
Nan Gongyu, now embarrassed by her actions, looked at Jin Shan's still form. She noticed the large, bloody injury on his back, evidence that he had indeed faced the dangers of the Yin Fiend formation inside the well to save her. Tears filled her eyes as she realized how gravely she had misjudged him. Crying nonstop, she wiped her tears and called out Jin Chun's name, filled with regret for her actions against someone who had saved her. Determined to make things right, Nan Gong Yu knelt beside Jin Shan and, with tears still streaming down her face, lifted him onto her back. She needed to hurry back to the sect and seek help from her grandfather to save Jin Chun's life. As she dragged his body along, she softly pleaded for him to hang on. After some time, Nan Gong Yu finally reached the sword sect. As she passed through the outer hall, several players gathered around, noticing her. One player recognized Nan Gong Yu and asked his friends, Isn't that the sword fairy NPC from the sword palace? His friend, puzzled, asked, Why is the sword fairy carrying a player on her back? Meanwhile, Nan Gong Yu was clearly tired from dragging Jin Chun's body. Her face was covered in dust, and sweat poured down her cheeks as she struggled to carry him. The players gathered around, curious about the identity of Jin Shin and wondering how someone could get so close to an NPC. Some players hoped they could also receive such treatment from NPCs, while others tried to get Nan Gong Yu's attention. At the same time, Chu Tianze, an inner hall disciple with distinctive long hair, stood among the outer disciples with his two lackeys. One of the lackeys, seeing Nan Gong Yu, wondered why their junior sister was carrying a man on her shoulders and who he was. The other lackey revealed that the man being carried by Junior Nangong was the new disciple, Lin Jin Chun, taken in by the sect master. The lackey further fueled Chu Tianzi's anger, reminding him how he liked Nangong Yu, by saying, How can our junior sister be so intimate with another man in front of everyone? Chu Tianzi stood frozen, clasping his hands behind his back. As he heard his lackey's words, his grip tightened, and he gritted his teeth, staring at Lin Jin Chun with jealousy for getting close to Nangong Yu. After passing through the outer hall, Nan Gong Yu flew toward her grandfather's abode with Jin Shun on her back. Some time later, Jin Shun, lying on a bed, woke up from his slumber. He groaned in pain as he opened his eyes, wondering where he was and how long he had been unconscious. As he looked around the room, he noticed a man standing at the entrance. The man was wearing green robes, had a long beard, and stared at Jin Shun with a stern expression. This was Elder Tianyuan of the Sword Sect. Jin Shin did not recognize him, but from the strong aura, he felt the elder was as powerful as Elder Tiangue. Jin Shin, struck by the Yin Fiend formation, was surprised to be alive and wondered if this elder had saved him. Jin Shin, body still trembling, stood up from the bed and thanked the elder for saving his life. He introduced himself as an inner disciple of the sect and asked for the elder's name. The elder slightly nodded and raised a hand, gesturing for Jin Shin not to worry about formalities. The elder then opened his eyes, his body emitting a killing intent, and introduced himself as Nan Gong Tanyuan, Nan Gong Yu's grandfather. Jin Chun's eyes widened in shock upon hearing the name. From his memories of his past life, he knew that anyone with the name Tian had significant backing, so he decided to stay close to the elder. Immediately, Jin Chun bowed deeply and expressed his gratitude, stating that he would forever remember the elder's life saving grace. Elder Tianyuan, eyes closed walked past Jin Chun and told him to forget about the favor but remember one thing. Jin Chun's eyes widened and he inquired, What is it? The elder opened his eyes, looking at Jin Chun intensely, and warned him to stay away from his granddaughter. If you ever lay a hand on my granddaughter, I will not let you off, he said sternly. He further added that even though Jin Chun was the sect leader's disciple, he would not hesitate to act against him. Just then, Nan Gong Yu entered the room and called out to her grandfather. Both Jin Shan and Elder Tianyuan turned to look at her. Nan Gong Yu, with her hands on her hips, inquired why her grandfather didn't keep his promise. You promised not to say such things to Jin Shan, she scolded. Elder Tianyuan, taken aback, started sweating and, waving his hand in denial, told Nan Gong Yu that he was just joking with Jin Shan. He then praised Jin Shan, saying, He is not a bad boy. After all, he saved you, so how could I not respect him? Nan Gong Yu glared at her grandfather. But without speaking further, she sat beside Jin Shen. Placing a hand on his arm, she asked him how he was feeling. Jin Shen, feeling a piercing gaze from behind, glanced at Elder Tianyuan out of the corner of his eye and decided to behave, knowing the elder might kill him if he crossed the line. A bead of sweat dropped down his cheek as he thanked Nan Gongyu for her concern and told her he was fine now. 
Nan Gong Yu gazed at Jin Chun's face and explained that he had been unconscious from the Yin fiend invading his body. She carried him back to her grandfather for help, and if she had been any later, the Yin energy would have reached his internal organs, which would have caused serious trouble. Jin Chun's face flushed red, and he thanked Nan Gong Yu for saving his life. Nan Gong Yu also turned her gaze, blushing, and told Jin Chun there was no need for him to be so formal with her. Jin Chun smiled and agreed. Elder Tian Yuan, Overhearing their conversation, his forehead veins bulging in anger, coughed loudly, trying to interrupt them. Jin Shen immediately backed away from Nan Gong Yu and told her it was better for him to remain formal with her. Nan Gong Yu's eyes widened at his reaction, and she lowered her gaze, her cheeks flushed red. She then told Jin Shen she should be the one thanking him, for if he had not risked his life to jump into the ancient well to find the antidote, she wouldn't have survived. She further apologized to Jin Shen for misunderstanding him and praised him for being an upright and honorable man. Jin Chun, clearly flustered, distanced himself from her, nodding his head while sweating profusely. He feared that if Nan Gong Yu continued speaking, the elder might kill him with a single slap. However, Jin Chun couldn't understand why Nan Gong Yu was looking at him with such affectionate eyes. He wondered, 32 favorability isn't low, but it's not enough for such a gaze. Just then, the game notified him that Nan Gong Yu's favorability had increased to 62 points, representing congenial love. Jin Shen was shocked. How could her favorability jump by 30 points? Jin Shen began to imagine if he continued developing her favorability, their relationship might take an unexpected turn. As lust washed over Jin Shen's face, Elder Tan Yuan's eyes filled with fury, and he coughed loudly again, trying to stop Jin Shen. Jin Shen, still lost in his thoughts, asked Nan Gong Yu if her grandfather had a cough problem and if he should find some herbs to treat it. Nan Gong Yu, placing a hand over her mouth, giggled and told Jin Shen that the old man was in good health but didn't need to worry, as he only needed to cough a bit and sleep it off. Hearing their intimate conversation, Elder Tian Yuan's fury shot through the roof. He turned around in anger and told Jin Shen, Now that you're awake, follow me. I'll give you a spirit beast as a reward. He further added that once Jin Shen received the spirit beast, he should leave immediately.